Hello everyone and welcome to Introduction to Economics course Unit 7. This unit is titled as the Monopoly and Imperfect Competition. Um, after completing this chapter, you'll be able to learn what a monopoly is and why it exists and learn how monopolies make pricing and output decisions, understand the welfare cost of monopolies, learn what an oligopoly is and why oligopolies exist, learn possible pricing strategies and output outcomes in an oligopoly, and understand the meaning of the Nash equilibrium, and also define the monopolistic competition. Um, before we start, let's look at some key terms related to our subject. The first one is monopoly. It's, as you see, it's a market structure with only one producer or seller of a good and it does not act as a price taker but a price setter. The next one is oligopoly. It's a market structure with few firms and each firm in the market produces a large share of the total market quantity and hence can influence the market price. And the last one is monopolistic competition, which is a market structure where there are many firms that sell differentiated products. Each firm has a monopoly over the product it sells, but many other firms make similar products and that complete for the same customers. Um, for example, uh, when we think of a monopoly, which is there is which which has only one producer of a good or service, uh, we can think of the example. If you own a personal computer, I probably use uh, some versions of Windows and the operating system sold by the Microsoft Company Co Corporation. The copyright gives Microsoft Corporation the exclusive right to make and sell copies of the Windows operating system. Um, when we talk about the sources of monopoly, uh, the first thing that we need to think about is, this, uh, is the barriers to entry. A monopoly exists in a market when there are barriers to entry, of course, and these barriers are government regulations, ownership of a key source, and natural monopoly. Uh, let's explain what government regulations are. They are uh, the regulations, um, or let's see, let's say they are some exclusive rights given by given to some people or some person uh, by the government uh, to sell some good or service. Ownership of a key source is if a company may rarely have control of a key source, we can talk about this ownership. For example, De Beers Diamond Mining and Marketing Company of South Africa controlled almost all of the diamond production in the world for years. And there is, of course, the natural monopoly. A natural monopoly occurs when economies of scale are so large that one firm can supply the entire market at a lower average cost than two or more firms. Um, there is a question. How do monopolies make output pricing, output and pricing decisions? But first talk about what is output effect and what is the price effect. The output effect is more output is sold, so the Q is higher, which tends to increase the total revenue. And the price effect, the price falls, so P is lower, this tends to decrease the total revenue. What I mean here is the monopoly is the only producer in the market and hence it faces a market demand curve. Since the market curve is downward sloping, the monopoly faces a trade-off. It can sell at a higher price but a smaller quantity or sell a larger quantity but a lower price. The marginal revenue of a monopolist is very different from the marginal revenue of a perfectly competitive firm. A perfectly competitive firm produces a small portion of the market output and hence it can sell any quantity it wants at the marketplace. A monopolist on the other hand has to lower the price to sell more and hence move down on the demand curve. When a monopoly increases the amount it sells, 
this action has two effects on the total revenue. When you look at the example table, we can say that it shows how the monopoly's revenue structure depends on the demand for its product. The first two columns here uh, shows the, uh, how the monopoly demand schedule. The third column shows the monopoly's total revenue. The fourth uh, column shows the monopoly's marginal revenue. And the last one is the average revenue. And as you see, similar to price, revenue, marginal revenue decreases as quantity demanded or sold increases. However, marginal revenue is always less than price. Um, when we talk about profit maximization for a monopoly, of course, we can say that a firm's unique objective is to maximize its profits. A uh, profit of a firm is equal to the total revenue minus total cost. A firm's objective, as we said, again, is to maximize its profits. So a monopoly is just like a competitive firm maximizes its profits at a quantity where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost for the last unit produced. So what is the difference? Uh, the differences between the competitive firm and a monopolist uh, can be summarized as follows. A competitive firm is a small firm among many firms. A monopolist is the only producer in the market. Where a competitive firm takes the market price as given, a monopolist faces the market demand curve. A competitive firm can sell any quantity in the market it wants, but the monopolist produces the price to sell more units. And lastly, a competitive firm, its marginal revenue is constant and equal to the market equilibrium price. But for a monopolist, its marginal revenue from the last unit sold is less than the price of the unit. Um, when we need to talk about the welfare cost of monopolies, uh, we can say that compared to a perfectly competitive market, a monopoly produces less than the socially efficient quantity of output and it charges a relatively higher price, price hence creates a dead weight loss. As you see, there is, a, there is an intersection triangle here and it represents the dead weight loss. Um, in this chapter, we assume that the monopolist charges the same price for each unit sold to each consumer. This is called uniform pricing. However, in many cases, uh, firms sell the same price, the same good to, uh, to different customers at different prices. And this practice is also called price discrimination. Perfect price discrimination is difficult to do for the monopolist because the monopolist needs to know the maximum willingness to pay of each consumer for each unit purchased. While perfect price discrimination is mostly a theoretical concept, we observe many examples of price discrimination uh, where firms use information on age, um, job, etc. as a sign of income in order to price discriminate among customers. For example, in movie theaters, low-income students buy tickets at a lower price than wage earners. Also, there are also uh, discounts for senior citizens who live on a pension income and hence are on a more limited budget. For example, uh, uh, I'm sorry, when we need to talk about oligopoly, this is, uh, this is an, another type of uh, competition. We can say that uh, this is a market structure where there are only a few firms in the market due to barriers to entry. For example, uh, the GSM market in Turkey uh, is composed of three firms, Turkcell, Avea, and Modafone. Um, in oligopoly, each firm takes the other firm's strategy as given and chooses the best response strategy. The best response strategy is a strategy that maximizes 
the firm's profits given strategies chooses by other firms as you see there are there are given the possible outcomes in an oligopoly and the first outcome is collusion it's it's a kind of agreement among firms to charge the same price or decide on quantities in cooperation with each other and uh, when we talk about the competition competition occurs when each producer maximizes its profits by choosing its own price or quantity without consuming the other uh, firms um, when we need to talk about the Nash equilibrium we can say that each firm chooses the best response strategy given the strategies chosen by other firms this is a situation in which uh, uh, which is um, named after the economist and Nobel laureate John Nash uh, note that this is a non-comparative, cooperative, and equilibrium concept. In this sense, firms are acting independently and not in cooperation with each other. Um, in all games, uh, when we think about the games while we are uh, talking about the markets, uh, we can give the title of using game and theory, using game theory to analyze oligopoly. Game theory here uh, is the study of how people, firms, or other countries make decisions in situations in which attaining their goals depend on their interaction with others. Games have three characteristics. The first one uh, are the rules that determine which actions are allowable. The second one are the strategies that players employ to attain their objective in the game. And the last one is payoffs that are the results of the interaction among the players' strategies. The payoffs in oligopoly context are the profits earned as a result of a firm's strategies interacting with strategies of other firms. Um, different from a monopoly uh, and similar to perfect uh, competition, monopolistically competitive market typically has many sellers because there are low barriers to entry in this market. And by doing so, new firms will enter easily when they observe that existing firms are enjoying positive profits. For example, uh, in the market for blue jeans, there are many producers such as Mavi Jeans, Levi's, Gas, Gap, Essie, Waikiki, and these are all brand, brand names as you see. Jeans are sold by these producers are differentiated according to style, quality, design, and etc. And uh, when we think of Levi's example, we can say that they entered the Turkish market in 1986. As a popular brand name, this firm enjoyed a high level of profits in Turkey. This attracted new entrants into the market, and Mavi Jeans entered in 1991. And before we finish, for each of the uh, following products, please try to describe what type of market structure you think that the good is sold in and explain your answer. The first one is Starbucks coffee, the next one is tomatoes, fuel oil, home phone service, cement using in construction. And while you are trying to answer this question, please think about perfect competition oligopoly, monopolistic competition, and monopoly. Thank you so much for joining us.